But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. All right. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. And if you are a Muslim, we are sorry that Satan, he pissed in your ears, sleep in your nose, and play with your anus. And this is why maybe you are not listening. And today we are going to talk about deception and how Muslims, they have a very, very funny, stupid uh, logic. And their prophet, uh, additional that he is suffering from mental illness, which we can prove in two seconds, uh, whoever follow Muhammad actually, he will be infected by such a mental illness. And I want the Muhammadan, my Skype is open, and you know, any, especially if you are a sheikh with long beard, uh, please feel free to contact me immediately and I will call you so you can join us in the conversation. You know, first of all, if we ask any historian, like even in this video in the intro here the muslim they brought someone he is antichrist he is literally antichrist he hates christianity and they thought okay this guy he wrote many books against christianity so we will bring him and we will make him say something help islam somehow even they gave him jobs in emirat in dubai that's why he said he have a phone book in arabic why because he was in dubai they give him a high salary, so maybe he will train Muslims how to attack a Christianity. But there is a very simple basis in what this idiot say. Because he is the same one who says, yes, the disciple, they saw somebody after Jesus was crucified, and he looked like Jesus. He agreed that Jesus did miracles. He agreed that the disciples saw miracles. But he don't agree that Jesus is anyone, which is showing me a sign of mental illness because you cannot agree of miracles and you deny that the one who do miracles is someone special. Uh, he is somehow resemble those who wrote the Talmud. The Talmud says that uh, uh, the Jews, they claim that uh, the Messiah, he went to, uh, to, uh, to Egypt and he took some courses in magic and then he learned how to do magic and then this is how he was doing miracles. We have a Muslim is trying to call us. Let us see uh, if we can start with him, and then we will start with uh, uh, Zakura and the rest of the Muslims' videos. Let us call him, and we will see. If you are a Muslim, just text me. I will be happy to have you. Hello. Hello, my friend. How are you? Are you a Muslim? Like, to be honest. Not anymore, though. Not anymore. But I would like to speak to you anyway. You know, like I appreciate your work anyway. Why not anymore? What happened? Don't you want? Don't you want the? Don't you want the versions? Nah, come on, man. No, I'm man. Sure. Listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. To, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you to go back to Islam because you know what? In Christianity, there's no versions. We don't have a banana tree in heaven. Don't you like banana? <laughs> You know? Yeah, but you're a legend, my friend. You're a legend for sure. 
Well, I'm nobody, my friend. I'm just a servant and I'm nobody. Uh, uh, so how I can help you, my friend? Go ahead. Like, look, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, in, in Matthew, Jesus said yeah. that he was not sent to nobody but to the lost children of Israel. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why. How you think that Jesus was sent to whole humanity? Well, isn't it the Bible says too, for God, he loved the world, he says, the only begotten son. So he was sent to the Jews because the Jews are the one waiting for him. Like if I go right now, who is waiting for me in the airport? People who love to see me. People who do not know about me yet, they, do not, they are not waiting. So for God, he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. So if he loved only the Jews, he will send them only to the Jews, correct? Right. Okay. So the answer is very simple. You know, the, the one who was waiting for him, the one is expecting the Messiah, is the Jews, not the Hindus, not the Arab, not even my people, you know. So uh, uh, this is why it says he sent to the Jews. But then you will see that the Messiah, he commanded them to go and teach the whole world. And actually, even Muslim books, it says in the book of Ibn Kathir, that the disciple of Jesus, when Jesus, he commanded them to go and teach uh, some to go to, to the east, some to the west, some to the south, some uh, uh, to the north. Uh, they said to him, Lord, how we can even uh, teach those languages? He said, don't worry, go to sleep. When they woke up in the morning, they were speaking in languages, in tongues, right? So even the Muslim books could not deny that the Messiah was sent for all mankind and to save all mankind. Any other question? Like, look, like I give you another perspective. Look, uh, for okay. example, like if you say like like God is the creator of everything and the and the like the source of everything, right? Is the Almighty Power, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why you think that that like this Almighty Power would like choose one nation, for example, or for example, like try to to deliver some message? Because like as I see it, as I see it, like all the elements in the world are a message. Like when the sun rises from the east and goes back to the west, it's a message. When, when the, the how to say, like, like when the people have, have, the, have this inner, inner voice in them, it's a message. Like I say, like the message is in everybody and in everything. And if people listen and see, they see the message, they need no, no scriptures and no messengers like this, you know. What yeah. you say about this? All right. My friend, when we say that the, 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 those are chosen people because they chose God. So if God, he spoke to Moses and Moses says to his people, worship my God. And they said, no, then they will not be chosen people. So chosen people are mistakenly people think that God, he chose them. No, God, he chose them because they chose him too. There's nobody else. He was uh, worshiping the God of the Jews in the time of the Jews. But if we go in the beginning, we will find that God, God he chose all mankind by choosing a man. Isn't it Adam is the father of all men? This is what the, those scriptures say. Yeah. No, no, I, I don't, you know, either you believe or not. This is not, this is not what the scripture says. This is what yeah. I believe. You're asking me about what I believe, right? So yeah, I'm what I believe, right. because the scriptures is just a paper and words, either we believe in it, then we call it scriptures because if you call it scriptures then why why you say scriptures if it's not so god he did not choose the jews did not choose the white did not choose the black did not choose the, the asian he chose in a man his name is adam and he made of adam a woman actually both of them they were called adam in the beginning so both of them they are chosen by god they can so they can live in heaven so we in the beginning were chosen but because we christian we believe in free will the free will give us a chance to be chosen or not. God, he chose us to be in his kingdom. We chosen not to be in his kingdom. And then we claim, or let us say, we cry, we say, oh, why does God, he chose such a person, not such a person? In fact, this has never happened. It was always your choice. It was not God the choice because we believe in free will. For God, he, he love you, but he cannot force you, not because he is not God, no, but he, the logic of love, that who, the one who will love me, come to me. This is why Jesus says, knock at my door and I will open for you. So anyone will knock at the door of Jesus, his will come to come to Jesus. Correct? Right. He did not say right. if you are black or white or, or a Jew or no. Whoever, as an example, the women, the Aramaic women, when she, when she met with Jesus, 
And she knocked at the door of Jesus and he blessed her. He said, Your faith is great. <laughs> so so she was a blessed, yet she is from not, not the Jews, even though it's not time for yet for the disciples to go and preach for non-Jews. But as you know, uh, uh, I can see things the way I want, when I want, and I can go blind when I want. As an example, you mentioned to me now that you see that everything around you is a message, and I agree with you. Everything is a message from God uh, because fingerprint of God is everywhere. It's like, you know, you go to a place and then the police come after and they take your fingerprint. If you've never been there, your fingerprint will never be there, correct? Mm -hmm. But when, we, when it's come to God, we will find that all fingerprints of God is everywhere. You know, you heard of something called the golden ratio, right? For sure, for sure, yes, sir. Okay, if we look at every design around us, we see the golden ratio is involved. If a human being get involved, then the golden ratio can be broken, and that is the ratio which God, he designed how the beauty is, and then it will look ugly. Anything that doesn't fit with the golden ratio is ugly. It's not pretty. But everything, the trees, the leaves, the branches, everything, anything is beautiful, have one fingerprint. Even the ugly one, because ugly is the man who is looking and what is looking at. So, as an example, a bird, he sees mosquitoes, something beautiful. You know, this is his, <laughs> this is his yummy. Uh, for me, I see it as something ugly. I hate but it's not because of a design. The design is incredible. Yeah, it's perspective. Yeah, it's perspective. exactly. So a fly, as an example, a fly who go in garbage and bother you and, you know, stop in your nose, uh, you know. But but the fly is incredible it's design. Just, yeah. There's no helicopter. Just, yeah, there's no helicopter. There's no, no airplane can do what the fly can do. They can for sure, for sure. They can for sure, for sure. stand in the, in, the, in the wall, in the ceiling. You know, they can hold in anything. They can go change direction so fast. Their wings mm -hmm. is extremely fast. So it's a small little tiny thing, but the design is incredible. And this is what God is. God is a miracle and everything he designed yes. is incredible. Exactly, exactly. That's what I talk about, you know. But then, you know, then this notion don't fit to me that, you know, like you you, you understand, like we have the same understanding that with this what we call God is this what is the 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 design of everything, like like the the, the metrics of everything. This is the this is the underlying structure of, of creation. And what is beyond creation, right? So then, uh, like I ask myself, how people can can limit this one, this oneness to something like, for example, in Bible, God is described as a jealous God, as somebody that wants to be worshipped and everything. You know what I mean? Like this don't don't fit with the notion of this inner-lying source of of creation. And no, and why, why? If I say I jealous, this is jealousy of love, my friend. Jealous is not a jealous of a human being. He is being selfish. Jealousy here because he cared for you. As an example, when God, he created Adam, he felt sorry for Adam, but do God feel sorry really? But God, because he gave you free will, you made a, you know, you, you made a free will decision and your decision took you to the wrong place. So sorry here is about love. Everything in Christianity is about love. In you, you are just looking at it as, okay, you know, he's jealous. Oh, you know, like maybe uh, like two females fighting over one guy or uh, two male fighting over one female. That is not the case of God. God is a jealous God because he loves you. This is why he said, you see, we see always the secret of Christianity is God love the world. And love mean you care. And jealousy mean not selfishness, you know, in this case. Because I can be jealous if I want to have you only for myself. But in the case of God, he is the one who made you. He is the one who created you. And he is feeling bad for you because he can see the future. He can see where you will end and you are not listening. So God is jealous is not in the way of owning you. Already he owned you. He made you. But because he feel for you and he want to save you. Otherwise, you believe you don't believe. It's up to you. You know, but so save you from what? Save you from what? From yourself, from your stupidity. Because we do stupid things. You know, we do stupid things and we think we are right. You're right. And when when it's the ego, right? Huh? This, this is not the real self, right? This is the ego. This is something what comes you can, from, from, from you external, can right? call it. You can call it whatever you want. Stupidity is a stupidity. You know, when somebody right. believes like there's somebody, his, his name is Allah, and he's going to give him 72 versions, so he decides to follow him mm -hmm. instead of God of Moses and Abraham, then he is being stupid. This is your decision. So you, right. you, are, you are following your desire, and your desire kill you. Desire can be good only if it's for a good reason. You know, like God, as an example, created man and women for a reason. So they can multiply and they can have a family. The man will be attracted to the women and the women will be attracted to the man. 
So it's a normal thing. It's a blessed by God. So sex itself is not a problem. But if we make life as the purpose of it is sex and food, that will be a problem. You know, because this is, was not the intention of God. He made you for better thing. You're a better quality. You're not an animal who just a donkey, right. you know, go eat the grass and, and, and go to the female. So because a human being, he can discuss, he can think, he has he have thoughts. God, he blessed him with those things. But in the same time, those things that they are used in the wrong way is the same as a gun in the hand of a policeman. He can be a criminal, the same policeman. He can be a criminal if you want. The same gun can save a life. The same gun can destroy a life. And that is the brain in the human being. He is carrying a gun, powerful gun. It's called the brain. It can save you and it can destroy you. And this is why we are here, my friend. So we can help those people who they don't know how to, uh, uh, to work out their brain. So we can help them yes, and, and give yes, them I a hand. Exactly like this. Yes, for sure, for sure. I see exactly like this, I swear. Yeah, man. But then we come back to the point, you know, then like when I see this exactly this way you, you say, it, but then I don't see like, like the image of God, what we call God doesn't, this image what I have in me does not fit with the description what I find in the Bible. Because when I find in the Bible, I, I, I find an ego being, a, a being which creates people in, in some garden to watch them and then get, forbids them to eat the fruit of wisdom to prevent them to become as he is because in, in, in initially he created the human in his own image right mm -hmm. like he, he he put the seat of divinity inside the human right you but see then he put yeah. a, a limitation in them why he put limitation in them and then but then there is a, a tree from which fruit man can attain the, this level of, of the one who created them like become one become Okay. One with the oneness. Okay. You, you know, know you know, you remind me of me when I was a kid. I was asking myself why the teacher is the teacher and I am the student. That is not fair. Mm. You know, I, I wanted to replace him. So I start giving him trouble because I don't like this teacher. You know, he is just making me sit in the in the in behind the, the table and he said to me, Hush, when I talk, he tell me what is your homework? And I said to myself, who is this guy is asking me, oh, where is your homework? But then when I grow up, I noticed that I was just a stupid kid who do not understand that the teacher is trying to help me. And you are asking the same question now. So God, when he gave uh, Adam heaven, he gave him everything. And he said, this is a tree you don't touch. So a human being, you said now that God is jealous. God is making you uh, uh, limited. The fact he did not, you limited it yourself because he gave you all the heaven. Why you want that tree? So you are a greedy. Again, stupidity is the function of a human being. He decided to function, the, uh, you know, God, he, when he created you, he gave you the intelligence and he gave you the opportunity to be stupid. So Adam decided to be stupid. Look, he did not see all the heaven that was given to him. He saw only that tree. Only that tree. So all the, all the million trees may be there. He did not see them. He said, only that tree. I want that tree. So a human being is a stupid and he is a greedy. And this is the lesson for us. If you love yourself, you worship yourself, you can make yourself God. You are not limited no more because now you became God, but God of stupidity because you are not anyone. You are nothing, you know, and now you're asking yourself why God make us limited. Like what? God, he made Adam to live forever in heaven, not limited. Adam decide to die. The wage of sin is death. So my friend, you are not thinking like clearly about the point. And uh, I hope you understand better uh, from what you, you think. I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from, bro. No, no, I don't want you to think. I don't want you to see where I'm coming from. This is what the Bible says. It's not up to you. It's not up to me. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I know the Bible. You know, I know the Bible. Yeah. But, but look, what I'm trying to say, like, look, okay, when God created Adam, yeah, and he said, like, you can stay in the garden, you can live forever, you can eat whatever you want, you can be happy. Like, this all material, like, what I see, like, God limited Adam to materialism. No, he did not. He did not. He, he, wisdom, did, he, right? he did not. But because Adam is made of material, so material, material is his nature. What he will give him? He will give him uh, like a virtual video uh, uh, glasses. You can see something uh, not real. What do you want? I mean, uh, you see no, him. No no, 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 no. Hold on. You know, human being, he is a greedy. And this is what you're asking for. God, he made you, gave you a heaven. Still, you know, he made me limited. I want more. What do you What? What more do you want? Tell me. Okay, like it was the fruit of wisdom, right? No, no, no. Tell me what more you want. What more you want? 
going beyond material cage, going beyond the so, understanding that... My, I, my, okay, uh, why God want to give you before behind material uh, uh, cage if you are a material yourself? But okay, look, like you said, Adam is material, right? Yeah, but isn't he dirt from dust to dust? Okay, but then I say his body is, is dirt. But but his spirit is part of God. Right? No problem, but so that is God, is my friend. The, the spirit of God never dies. So even when you die as a mm -hmm. human being, your exactly. spirit your spirit never dies. So we have resurrection. Exactly. In fact, in fact, there is nothing is called death if you think about it, because yes, always right. your spirit will be alive, either in heaven or in hell. Same time, we have something called resurrection. Resurrection is reuniting, which means even that dead body is going to come back to life again. And will be alive, so the death is temporarily, and the life of the spirit is forever. Same time, you decide through your journey where you will be. There's two. Let's say there's two train. One will take you to the kingdom of God, and one will take you to hell. Well, you took the one to hell. Good for you. Don't blame God. God, He sent you even His own Son to say, "Hey, listen to me. I love you. Come here with me. You don't want." And now you complain. By when 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 uh, uh, when they asked Jesus about uh, who was going to marry this woman, he said he and she they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. So you will see that you will not be limited to material no more because now you are the same as angel. Which means you will not need to sleep, you will not need to, you will not get sick, you will not have a body like now. It's going to be different. Uh, you will be you will be pure. Uh, uh, you will live forever and your joy is different jo joy your joy now is connected to something you can feel you can touch you can hear you can see because you have sensation and those sensation is the only things you have however when we as a Christian we become a Christian we receive the Holy Spirit so every creature every, even every human he have two things he have a flesh and he have a soul Except the Christians, they have a flesh and they have a soul and they have the Holy Spirit. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you are in different levels. Still, you are connected to material because you are right now living in this earth. But when you are in heaven, you will not be of that material. You will be the same as angels, the same as the Lord, he says. Anyway, my friend, I can't keep you for long because we have a topic and you take me way away from my topic. Okay, okay, I understand, my brother. Okay, but I anyway, want to ask no, you. You I said you used to be. You used to be. You used to be a Muslim. You used to be a Muslim. Why you left Islam? Look, okay, I tell you. Before I was Christian. Then okay. I start to ask questions. You understand? Mm -hmm. like, exactly these questions. You know, I, I start to look and search and learn, and then like from from Bible, I came to the Quran because there I seen there was the same stories, the same narrative. But the only difference, like I was in the level where I still was focused on scriptures, you understand? Mm. And I seen like the, the, the Christians, they don't follow the scriptures. For example, scriptures say don't eat pork, but Christians don't, don't follow it. They don't That's eat false, pork. my friend. That's false. You don't understand. The Christians never say don't eat pork. You don't understand the Bible. You never read the Bible. This is was a command gave to the Jews. Listen, no, listen, listen. You see that the problem, the problem that we are ignorant and we think we are philosophers. Even the stupid Muhammad, he said he was copying the Jews. He said that Israel, he forbade nothing of himself, which means nothing was forbidden for Israel except what he forbade to himself. Do you know that? So explain. Which means no food was forbidden. No food was forbidden. Mm -hmm. Okay? So all of food was illegal and uh, 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 except what he forbade to himself, which means he made his own law. So he made his own law, and he said, I'm not going, here we go, chapter 3, verse number 93, it says, كل الطعام كان حلا لبني إسرائيل. All the food was lawful for the children of Israel, except what Israel, he made unlawful for him, but his choice, you know, he decided, I don't, I don't want to eat this. So when Moses came, Moses, he have a law. The law of Moses was given to the Jews. And even the Muslim, they agree that, yeah, Israel have a different... Actually, I have a video right now. I can play it for you from Mufti Ming. He was speaking about different time, different, etc. But, you, you know, you follow a stupid religion. And I see that you are a smart person. But in a certain time, a human being, he goes stupid. Because you are saying to me, there is a lot of similarity between Islam and Christianity. In fact, we have zero 
things to share. Zero. Not a single thing. Same time, if the Muslim they speak about eating pork, and now you wonder why in the world you pick up the pork, but you did not notice that the Muslim they eat camel. Isn't the Torah forbid the camel? Yeah, yeah, like everything. What, what has? Um, no, 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 no. Just to show you the stupidity. You see, I'm not insulting you, my friend. Don't take me wrong. I'm just. I, I, I say. No, I, know, I, know. I say things as it is. This is stupidity because the Muslim they focus I, on eating pork, but they forgot that they are the one who eat camel and drink the pee of the camel. Not only they eat the camel, they drink his piss. This is a piss religion. So how in the world they can speak about following Moses when they are the number one? They broke the Ten Commandments, all of them. Don't look at the woman, she is not yours, Muhammad, he did, and he taught his followers to do so. Muhammad, he go after his own son-in-law, in -law, uh, 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 his son, his son wife. Muhammad have sex with the children. Muhammad is a thief. Yeah, Muhammad was accused even of stealing underwear. Listen, 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 listen. Muhammad even he taught us to do muta, which is totally unlawful for Moses. If you do that, you will be stoned. So this is Muhammad who claim, and the Muslim they claim that they are following Moses. But if you go check the Ten Commandments, you will see that everything in the Ten Commandments is broken, including number one, like worship your God alone. The Muslim they associate the name of Muhammad with the name of Allah, and that is a shirk by itself. Because the second you associate the name of a man with the name of God, that is what is called shirk, which means associating of a human being with God. Yet they claim that they are people who believe in oneness of God, but in reality, they are a bunch of dumb, and we are here to get them busted. I know, my brother, I know. You do good work also, you know. I appreciate your work. I learned also many things from you, you know. But I have to tell you, I left Islam already a long time ago, you know, because, like, I was, as I say, I never stopped learning. I never stopped search, you know, and then, like, I was not satisfied with what I, I got in, in the masjids and, and what I got from all the people, you know, because I realized they're all sheep, you know, that they just say, we just follow it because Muhammad made made like this, because Muhammad said like this, and they don't don't bring, bring no even no uh, contemplation, you know. Like, when I say, for example, why did Muhammad say like this? They say, don't ask this brother, this is from shaitan, just follow this because it, it says like this, Muhammad made, we don't ask, we just make like this. Yeah, chapter 5, yeah, verse really chapter saying. five verse 101, ask no questions, verse 102. It tell you why because you will leave Islam, my friend. I can't keep you longer because we have to go back to our topic. If you know, if you know okay, some some Muslim sheikhs, yeah. If you know some Muslim sheikhs, they would like to call us and mm. challenge them to call me. Tell them be the man and get this guy busted. I would love to see it, don't you? I don't have any, anything to do with these people anymore. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, challenge them. I'm sure you 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 know that because you used to be a Muslim, so you used to go to mosque, etc. Say, hey. Listen, mm -hmm. what about you call this guy? I want to see how good you are and you're God. You know, challenge them. Yeah, you know, yeah. let us see how good they are. And as you see, uh, did I speak to you before? Never, right? No, no. Okay. So uh, as you see, my Skype is open for any, anyone. Mm -hmm. So they have no excuse. Yeah, okay. Hey. okay, my brother. Okay, as I say, man, I appreciate you. Right. And maybe we can talk, talk in future more. All right. Time, yeah? God bless. Take care. Okay, God bless you. All right. If you are a Muslim, feel free to join me. And this is a mistake many people will, you know, think that Muslims and Christians, they share many things. That is a big fat lie the Muslims they promote so they can deceive you. This is the point of deception. A thief, he come to you wearing the uniform of the phone company. But this is his not, this is not his uniform. Muhammad, he understood very well that he is nobody. So he had to use the name of the trusted one. This is why the Bible says to us, be worried, be aware, be vigilant. There's false teachers right there. They will come to you in the clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. So you better use your brain. Otherwise, somebody will use it for you and will decide for you and you will become a fool now we go to our topic which is the crucifixion of Jesus every single Muhammad and he have different story for the crucifixion of Jesus every single Muhammad they can't even get tell us what happened to Jesus Muhammad himself he have many stories if you go to Zakur and Ayuka And you ask him, what happened to Jesus? You will find a different story from what uh, Zach, uh, Yasser Qadi says.
you will find everyone Ibn Kathir al Qurtubi al Jalala. I mean, everyone, and they give you this scholar say this, and that scholar say that, and maybe, and Allah knows best. So the Quran have time to tell us about the story of the ant speaking to the ants. The ant, she said to the other ant, can you please hide yourself? Otherwise, Suleiman will crush you. Prophet Solomon, he have a lot of women to F them. He decided to F 100 women in one night so he can have 100 baby by the morning. Looked like Solomon was a chicken and he was laying eggs. But Allah don't have time to tell us what happened exactly to Jesus. If you read the Quran, you will die laughing at the story. Because there is no story in the story. This is Zakura Nayuka. Peace be upon her. She don't dare to talk to me. She don't dare to receive my call. She is a female virgin claiming virginity, but everyone in town step with her. Listen to what he will say and how he can prove to us who is the one who was deceived. Greetings to Dr. Zaki Naik and all my brothers and sisters here in the name of our Lord Creator. Well, it's an honor to meet you, sir, Dr. Zaki Naik. Yeah, it's an honor. Well, my name is Mahesh. And Let us I go. work as a customer service officer in I Dubai. mean, uh, I work as a customer God. service. And anyone who submits his will to God, he's a Muslim. Uh -huh. As far as our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, he has ilm gab, he has knowledge of the future. Allah says in the Quran, very clearly, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 157, Allah says that they boasted, the Jews, that we kill Jesus, the son of Mary. Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُهُ وَمَا صَلُبُهُ They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّيَ لَهُمْ And anyone who differs is full of doubts. Which only conjectures to follow. For assuredly they killed him not. So Quran is very explicit, confident. Look how stupid he is. He just said, the Jews they say we killed him. Allah says they did not kill him for sure, which means they are not sure. He is not saying for sure they did not kill him, like uh, confirming. No, he is saying they were not sure about what they did. But you stupid, you just said, the Jews said, we killed him. So they are sure. Otherwise, why somebody will say, we killed Jesus, if they are not sure they killed Jesus? You know, the Muhammadan, they claim that the Quran have a very strong Arabic language. The Quran is a piece of shit. The Arabic language is so stupid to the point we Arabic Christian, we die laughing at it. Excuse my language. But I cannot really describe it better. At least shit is, can be used as fertilizer. The Quran cannot. If you read with me, you will see how stupid this chapter or this verse is. They said, and between bracket and boast. What the heck does that mean? You know, I want to ask the Muslim, for the sake of the shin of Allah, why you keep adding, you know, a, a bracket to the Quran if the Quran is amazing Arabic and so clear? Are you saying to me if we translate it as it is, it's confusing? Exactly. So let us add the bracket, the bracket jungle. So they said we can Christ Jesus, son of Mary. So you stupid, how you say they are not sure and they say we kill Jesus. Have you ever heard of somebody who will say, I killed this guy and he is not sure he killed this guy? And not only one Jew is saying, the Jews, all the Jews, not only Jack Shalom, Moshe, Jack Shalom, Rabbi, Raphael, all, all of them, they say we killed Jesus. Allah, he answered them, says, oh, they are not sure. Look what he's saying. 
and those who are differ therein are full of doubt. Who is the one is differ, you stupid? Who are they? Not a single one. The Jews, they say we killed Jesus. It's in the Quran. The Christian, they say Jesus died. It's in the Bible. Who is differing? And then, the Quran and Yuka, he says, it was made to appear to them. And the name of the video is what? Was the Christians or the Muslim deceived by Shaitan to believe that Jesus was crucified? Well, as you see, the one who made Jesus crucified in appearance at least, it is Allah. If you go and read the interpretation of this verse, every single Abdul in the world will say to you that Allah brother Fitr. He threw the look of Jesus in someone. So now we have two Jesus. Which one is you, Jesus? Me, me. No, you look the same now. Are you twin? MashaAllah, the twin Jesus. So the cloning story in Islam is hilarious. As an example, Shaitan, he cloned the angel Jibreel. He gave Muhammad satanic verses. Muhammad, he did not notice that this is not Jibreel. Why? Because he looked the same. So he received satanic verses. And here we see Muhammad proving to us that he himself was deceived by Satan, receiving Quran, which Muslim they claim no one can make like it. Yet Muhammad, he took Quran from Satan and he did not even notice that it's not Quran. And then Allah, in order to fix it, he make it more poo-poo. So he said, whatever shaitan he throw in Muhammad tongue, Allah will take it out, which means it's already Quran because you don't take out something is not out there. Hmm? You don't take out something is not there, correct? I take out only something is in. The language is so clear. Unless you are a Mohammedan and you drink camel urine. Never we send the messenger or a prophet before you, but we had recite, when he had recite revelation or narrated or spoken shaitan, he throw some falsehood in his mouth. But this is false. Name for me the one who shaitan he throw in his mouth anything. Moses? Isa? Only Muhammad. Muhammad the fool, he was being a hypocrite in front of the Arab, so he started worshipping the three daughters of Allah. And he said, those the three daughters of Allah, their intercession is a must. And he bowed down worshipping them, and the Arab, they bowed down worshipping him too, worshipping the daughters. Then when the news spread, the, the, the one who they are Muslim, they said, oh, this man, he lied to us. So they start leaving Islam. So Muhammad wanted to fix it. And he claimed that shaitan, he throw in his tongue something from shaitan. But remember, the Muhammadan, they claim that the Prophet and the Quran is protected. How it is protected? And you just confirm in this verse that something was thrown in the, in the mouth of Muhammad and Allah will take it off. And now how we can guarantee that this verse itself is not from shaitan himself? How we can guarantee? It doesn't say even says what he is taking off. As long as shaitan he can throw once, he can throw twice, he can throw three, three, he can say he can throw as many as you want. Like what shaitan he throw once and he he never come back. Maybe his battery was off. Same time, why Allah wanna deceive the Christians and the Jews and the whole world about the crucifixion of Jesus? Did that solve the problem? If the Muslim, they say, Allah, he knew the future. Do Allah knew that now the Christian will believe that Jesus was crucified? Yet supposedly he's not. So what this drama is about? A stupid story and not a single historian agree with it. Historian who they are not even Christians. In the time of the Roman, pagan Roman, they, they said clearly that the Messiah was crucified. Even the potato, Borat, the one Mimi Hijab, he brought him, he thought he can, you know, use him to, to, to fight Christianity. He said to him, you know what? 
Well, Jesus, he was crucified and he was totally buried. That are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> Let us see. Yeah, they don't. They believe, but they don't understand what they are believing in. Without understanding, the brother asked a very important question. Let us go to the the Borat. Where is Borat? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. Yeah, halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. In the prophet it. tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who the prophet he was busy to tell us Shaitan doing what? Shaitan he take care of from your anus when you pray. This is why Shia Muslims, I guarantee you, if Muhammad is a truthful. Every Muslim anus is bored because of shaitan. He take one hair at least each time you pray. I mean, uh, you are out of hair. And all of this for what? Because you want to make you fart. This is Muhammad. This is the one who want to make us believe in what? And believe in what? And not to believe in what? The one who tell us shaitan take hair from your anus. This is a serious man. The serious prophet of God who have a knowledge of the anus. So listen carefully. Shaitan, he sleep in your nose. Shaitan, he play with your penis. Shaitan, he go around your penis and if your wife. Shaitan, he spit at Adam and he cause him to have a belly bum. Shaitan, he, uh, 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 he, he pee in your ears, sleep in your nose, and he jump in your mouth when you do yawning. All of those are from the true storyteller. His name is Muhammad Joe Biden. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus See, this potato, he brought this guy to insult Jesus, but yet he insulted Muhammad. Why? Because he confirmed that the Messiah, he, as he said, I caught him, he thought he is a son of God. So he confirmed from a history historian point of view as an atheist an enemy of Christ that yes Christ he claimed to be son of God he thought he is son of God he thought and yes he was dead and buried in the front of his face and the coward the potato was shaking his like a mule he did not say but this is an insult to my prophet because everything he just said in short sentence is against the Quran and Muhammad is a liar for sure for sure, Jesus was crucified. For sure, the Messiah, he thought he is a son of God. And the mule, Mimi Hijab, is shaking his head. I do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all. He thought he would be the Messiah, which means Muhammad is a liar again. This guy is throwing rocks, bombs at Muhammad religion in, the, in, in his face. And this potato, because this guy is famous, he did not dare even to say a word to him. Well, no wonder his last name is Hijab, which means Burqa. For all why they crucified him. Do we have any Muslim would like or he would dare to call me? Any sheikh? Any brave one. So when the Muhammadan they speak about someone was crucified instead of Jesus, we find that is very laughable. And then we need to ask them, you know what? As long as this is the case, this God he always so good in cloning. When Allah, he sent the angel Jibreel, he sent him after he cloned an image of a man who Muhammad obviously have a relationship with him. And he was the most handsome boy in town. He is a young youth. How oh Allah he sent the angel Jibreel. Let us see the, the hadith. Allah he made the angel Jibreel come in the image of Dahya al Kalbi.
Dahya, the dog. I'm not insulting, by the way, this is his name. Yeah, the Arab, they have weird names, like uh, the wife of Muhammad. Muhammad himself, his last name is Kilab, which means dogs. Uh, so, uh, you will see, uh, let us see if I can find this hadith in English. Give me a second, I'm trying. You know, the problem is always is to find uh, an English one so we can share with you easy without me translating. All right, look at this. Dahiya Kalbi, he stays so late with Muhammad. Obviously, there's something fishy between them. The wife of Muhammad, she came to him late at night. She saw somebody there. The wife, she said to him, who is this? Like, is that, is that Dahya? He looked like Dahya, is that Dahya? Muhammad, he claimed that this is the angel Gabriel. So each time this guy, he come to Muhammad, Muhammad, he claimed that this is Gabriel. So now we have two guys in the town, both of them, their name is Dahiya Kalbi. One is the real one, and one is the angel Gabriel. I saw the angel Jibreel coming to the Prophet of Allah. And there was with him Ummu Salama. Ummu Salama was with Muhammad supposedly. And he began to talk with him. He then stood up, whereupon Allah Apostle said to Ummu Salama, Do you know who was he? And what did he say? She said, He is Dahir Kalbi. <laughs> she did not say maybe he looked like actually. He said he is the Kalbi. I mean, this is clear. I mean, you know, uh, Mecca is a small village, not even a town. Uh, this is the Kalbi. Muhammad, he told her later, no, this is Jibreel. So the angel, he come in the image of a man, and this man is the boyfriend of Muhammad. Allah, he cloned Jesus. Allah, he cloned Dahya. Shaitan, he cloned Sir Solomon, if you remember the story. He took his ring, and this is how Solomon, he lost his, his kingdom. Shaitan, he cloned Gabriel, and he came to Muhammad in the image of Gabriel. Everybody is cloning everybody in Islam. And then you need to ask yourself how we can be sure that Islam is telling the truth and how we can trust anyone. Because now, maybe Muhammad is not Muhammad. Maybe Muhammad is Shaitan. If the angel Jibreel, he can clone the angel himself, why he cannot clone Muhammad? If the angel Jibreel clone in the Hill Kalbi, how we knew that the Hill Kalbi is a claiming or Maybe lying to Muhammad, or Muhammad is just lying. Which one? Based on those stories, the Muslim now they have to believe in anything. I can come to you and I say, you know what? I am Jibreel. You say to me, Oh, you look like Christian Prince. I say, Oh, don't you know that Jibreel he came in the look of the Hill Kalbi? In different hadith, Muhammad, he claimed that he saw Jibreel only twice in the real way he looked like, which means all the time he see him as the Hirkalbi. Kalbi. 
only twice. Otherwise, all the time he see him in the image of Dahir Kalbi. So, the Muslims themselves are so confused about the crucifixion of Jesus. Every one of them give you a different story. And not only that, they even, you know, they, they, they spit at each other's stories. And if you don't agree, if you are a Muslim, you don't agree with other Muslims with the story, which nobody can validate in any way, in any mean, the other Muslim will spit on you. Yeah. You have to spend the first 10 minutes just uh, saying Assalamu as alaikum Muhammad and the Prophet of the family of Muhammad and the wife of Muhammad and then after 15 minutes he will start with the topic. So let us skip the stupidity. <laughs> Be objective and not to be a servile conformist of their sheikh or to, uh, as Sheikh uh, Imran Hussein himself says, to, uh, to critically, critically think regarding what he's saying and how it contradicts uh, the Qur'an. So please uh, watch the following clip. Jazakumullah khair. When they saw him die on the cross, they were convinced he could not have been the Messiah. What they did not know was that Allah made it appear to them that he was crucified. What's the definition of crucifixion? It is that you should die by hanging on the cross. What is... Louder. You guys, shaitan, he this piss in your ears. What's wrong with you? Louder, huh? Mm. Okay, let me see. Louder. Was it Allah made it appear to them that he was crucified? What's the definition of crucifixion? It is that you should die by hanging on the cross. What is the definition of death? Answer. The definition of death is that Allah should send the angel to take the soul and not return it. Is there anyone who differs with me? And look, look. The Muslim, they remind me of a Democrat. Like, what is the definition of a woman? I mean, do we even need definition of death? <laughs> what is the definition of death? I mean, this nation have a dead brain and they are asking, and he's asking the Mohammedan, I don't blame him, by the way, because the one he's talking to, they have a dead brain, they drink camel urine. So what do you expect? What is the definition of death? When they saw Jesus in the cross, it was not Jesus. What is the definition of, I mean, okay. And now this guy, he will throw a bomb at you. The definition of death is that Allah should take the soul and not return it. Can Allah take a soul and return it? Tell the school boy, go back and study the Quran. So then what did Allah do to make it appear? Hmm. That he died. What he do? Let me warn you. Let me warn you. And my language is sometimes very harsh. This so is that's the only language some people can understand. Do you understand, Muslim, why I'm harsh with you? Do you understand? This is the only language you understand. 
Too much camera you in, my friend. We kill you. Don't come with this nonsense. This is nonsense. Because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful to say that Allah, when I was with Allah, in Hadha, Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa alayhi salam, and that innocent man, innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. Wait for judgment day with that. Nonsense! Pathetic nonsense. It's not there in the Quran, it's in your imagination. <laughs> That's why it is. And yet it took the world of Islam by storm. What a brainwash Ummah we are today. My friend, I cannot find better sentence than yours. What a brainwashed nation you Muslims are today and before. I mean, this guy supposedly is trying to be smart and saying to them, so are you saying that Allah is a deceiver? He plays someone instead of Jesus so he can deceive those people so to save Jesus. Well, cannot he save Jesus without any of this drama? What for? He can destroy all the Jews, supposedly. He can destroy all the Romans. In the same time, how come Allah did not save Muhammad when Muhammad died by a poison from Walmart? I'm just using your books, I'm using your logic. Why Allah want to save Jesus from a crucifixion, but the man he suffered horribly for years he keep vomiting, he keep uh, having diarrhea, his poop is all over the place, especially when the fan is on. The prophet in his element, which he died, used to say, not only he said, used, which means every day the same story. Uh, the poison I ate in but oh, it's got in my heart. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Horrible. Horrible. Now, let us see what if Jesus was there while Muhammad was in pain? What will happen? Muhammad is suffering, screaming, crying from pain. If Jesus was there, what he would do? And this is what we believe about him. Amazing. And we believe he had miracles. The Quran makes mention of how by the will of the Almighty, the Almighty gives this power to, to his messengers. He could cure those who were sick and ill by merely passing a hand over them. He could create a little bird-like structure made of clay and he would blow on it and it would begin to fly. This is Jesus. Allah gave him this power. Listen carefully. Allah gave this power to Jesus. He can barely wave his hand over the crowd and make them all heal. You don't give me the sin, no camel urine, no honey, no black, black seed. He can create from the mud a bird and he make it a fly. That is Jesus. During the time Jesus was healing millions and creating creatures, what Muhammad was doing? Oh my Orta, oh mommy, oh mommy Orta Tommy, Orta Tommy, oh mommy, oh mommy, where is Allah, where is Allah to help me, oh mommy. So the Messiah, he waved his hand, he made the crowd heal. Muhammad, he moved his ass, Muhammad, he jumped, Muhammad have a diarrhea, Muhammad is fainting every few seconds and nowhere Allah to be found to help Muhammad. Even the hadith confirm that Muhammad used to faint every few seconds. Not every few hours. The guy was like a Christmas tree. We, we. 
He is up, he is down, he is up, he is down, he is up, he is down. The chapter, what has had been narrated concerning the prayer of the Messenger of Allah, S-A-W-S, this is kind of a, uh, uh, you know, camel urine, during his sickness, why he is sick? How come Jesus never be sick? How come Jesus can heal everybody? The Messenger of Allah fainted, boing. When he was sick, boing, and then he woke up, boing, he said, Is the time for the prayer come? They said, Yes, yes, yes. He said, Tell Bilal to call for the Adan, and tell Abu Bakr to lead the people for a prayer. Boing, he fainted again. Then he woke up again, knock, boing, boing, boing. He said, Is the time for the prayer come? They said, Yes, yes, yes. He said, Tell Bilal to call for the Adan. And tell Abu Bakr to go in the prayer for the people. Then he fainted, boing, boing, boing. Then he woke up again and he said, Has the time for the prayer come? Then they said, Yes, yes, yes. He said, Tell Bilal to call for the Adan and tell the Abu Bakr to read the prayer. Aisha, she cannot take it no more. I mean, she, this this idiot, he is like a like a like a robot machine, like a broken CD, like a breaking egg. Like the woman, she she bought a CD to make a cake, and the CD stuck. She could keep saying breaking egg, breaking egg, breaking egg, and now she is out of all eggs. She called the husband, send me more eggs. He said, I sent you just one hundred. What 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 you did to them? I said, no, no. The CD keeps saying breaking egg, and this is Muhammad. His CD stuck. Each time he wake up, he say the same sentence. Aisha, now she cannot take it no more. This guy is 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 a uh, is a plinking. Even the the foreign minister of uh, of USA, his name is uh, what his name uh, plink plinking. Yeah, he's like Joe Biden. They fit. They plink together. So Aisha said, "My father," she said to Muhammad, "is a tender man, man, and if he stand." In that place, he will weep. He will not be able to do it. So if you told someone else to do it, better, better. Then he fainted. I mean, he should not even finish the sentence. Then he woke up again and he said, Tell Bilal to call for the Adan and tell Abu Bakr to lead the people for the prayer. What the heck is that? The guy, he faint, he wake up, he faint, he wake up, he faint. I mean, why you don't change the name of the title and call it the fainted prophet? So while Jesus was waving his hands and thousands of people healed, Muhammad was fainting. Not fainting. Fainting. Hey, Aisha, can I see the prophet? Oh, you cannot. He faint, just fainted. Come after two minutes. Maybe he will come back. Uh, is the prophet not fainted now? Yes, he is not fainted. Oh, he fainted again. Sorry. He just, uh, you know, when you knock at the door, he was uh, fine. But he just fainted. I mean, what kind of a battery you are using, Muhammad? So why Jesus, dude, why Jesus, he barely waved his hand over the crowd and he make them healed? Almighty, the Almighty gives this power. The Almighty give him the power. The Almighty, which mighty? You see, you stupid Muhammadan, when you say the Almighty, do you have a proof? When you say the Almighty, you claim this is Allah. That is false. As you see, Allah could not save Muhammad. You're a prophet suffering from diarrhea, vomiting. Uh, he, he lost it. Even uh, uh, Umar al Khattab, he said, Qad hajar al Rasul, which means he lost his mind. You know the word muhajirin and hijra is coming from leaving, you know, like leaving, leaving from place, it's, it's a normal state to different state. Hajra Rasul, which means he lost his mind. This guy is, is, is just mentally ill. So the Messiah, he was given the power of Almighty, but that make him Almighty. If the Almighty gave me the power of the creation, and resurrection and healing all diseases. So what is left? What is left that Jesus, he lived forever, even in Islam. Power to, to his messengers. He could cure those who were sick and ill by merely passing a hand over them. Barely. He could create a little bird-like structure made of clay and he would blow on it and it would begin to fly. Notice that the Messiah, he blow. 
Do you know what the blow resemble? When God created Adam, he blow in the mud. That means the Messiah, he create soul. From his breathing, life come. This is what he just said. The Messiah, he blow soul. The source of a creation is coming from God. Who is the source of a creation? It's in front of you. It is Jesus. And this is why the Bible says everything was created for him, by him. What else Jesus can do? Tell us. A little bit of food would be sufficient for a lot of people. That's Muhammad used to eat lizard because there's no food. Jesus, you bring him little food, he make it enough for thousands of people. Muhammad, you bring him a lizard, he start counting the fingers, and he think they are Jews. How in the world anyone, after he hear this, he will follow Muhammad? You bring Jesus little food, and the Messiah will multiply it to be enough for thousands? Yes, my friend, this is my Lord. Not the fainted prophet and the fainted Allah. By the will of the Almighty, the Almighty gives this power to, yeah. to his messengers. Uh -huh. He could cure those who were sick and ill by merely passing a hand over them. Mm -hmm. He could create a little bird-like structure made of clay. Are you sure it's little, not an elephant? The guy now, he is saying little, you know, like where, where do you get the little from? Is that in the Quran? The Quran say little or you are making a little story now? It's little? And do size matter? The one who can create a chicken, he can create an elephant. Little, 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 you know. He's adding words, it's not there. And he would blow on it and it would begin to fly. Fly. A little bit of food would be sufficient for a lot of people. It's a miracle of the Prophet Jesus. These are mentioned in the Quran. And guess what? They're mentioned in the Bible as well. No way. I can't believe it. Guess what? Guess what? Where we are copying stories, brother. Guess what? We Muslims we are a bunch of thieves and we are taking even stories. It's not from the true Bible too, like the story of the bird. Guess what? Guess what? The story of the ant is speaking to Solomon. This is coming from the legion of the Jews. Guess what? All those stories, Muhammad, he stole them from somewhere. Guess what? When my grandfather, he died standing for a year and nobody noticed that he is dead because he was holding a stick. This is a true story. Showing you that if you are holding a stick, you can stand for a year and nobody will notice, brother. But the termite, Allah have a plan. But the termite, they have different plan from the plan of Allah. The filthy termite, they start eating the stick of Solomon. And they start showing it slowly. Look, look, even the Muslim, they add for you the word slowly. I love the details in the Muslim translation. Hey, brother, why you are saying slowly? Are you trying to tell us that it took them a lot of time? So now Suleiman is standing dead and nobody notices. And the termite, they are eating the steak. And this is a king, he have, God knows how many servant and uh, people to clean his room and his wives they did not notice brother the guy is dead his wife did not notice normal normal you know yeah i mean if you are married to a man and you go to his room he is standing holding a stick how in the world you will notice he is dead even after one year nobody noticed brother the genie did not notice too 
Like nobody noted that this guy is not talking. I mean, have you ever heard of a person? He dies standing and he stays standing for a year. In Islam, it happened because as they say, shit happened. Excuse my language. Shit in Islam become holy. Shit in Islam became a prophet. Shit in Islam became God. Shit in Islam became a scriptures. Shit in Islam become a truth. This is why you see in America, they say, holy shit. Then you go to the holy Ibn Kathir, so you can understand this holy boo-boo. Chapter 34, verse number 14. Shall we go there? Because the Muslim, they will say, it doesn't say that, CP. You know them. Does it say that, or it doesn't say that? No, it doesn't say that. He's lying. He was not dead for a year. It was 11 months and 30 days. So Christian Prince, he added one day. Do you know what one day can do in the history of religion? Allah tell us how Suleiman, peace be upon him, died and how Allah concealed his death from the jinn who were subjugated to him to do hard labor. Yeah, go to work. He remained leaning on his stick, brother, which was his staff, as Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, and Mujahid, and Hassan, and etc. All of them, they heard it from Muhammad. This is the story of Muhammad. They said, he stayed like that for a long time, nearly a year. And brother, when the creature of the earth, which is a kind of worm, ate through his stick, become weak and fell in the ground. The prophet is in the ground. That must be a holy ground now. True story. So this is where we are going to take our logic from. And this is the religion, if we can call it a religion, the religion of the termite, it's challenging the will of Allah. Remember, Allah want to conceal his death. The termite, they said to Allah, listen, Allah, you are God, we are not. You want to bet? You want to conceal his death? We are going to expose him. So the termite, she called her friend. And the friend, they came. He said, the termite, they have a meaning. Let us eat his stick. One of them, she said, don't speak dirty. He said, you dirty girl. We are not talking about his penis. We are talking about the stick, the wood. Oh, okay. So let us eat his stick so we can make him fail down and Allah plan will be destroyed. So those termite, they call their friends from everywhere and they start eating the stick of, of, of Suleiman. And a brother took them almost a year. And then Suleiman, he fell apart. Bingo. And the plan of Allah was totally destroyed. If I am Allah, I will advise Suleiman to next time to buy a stick or get a stick from, uh, from, uh, from Amazon like, uh, uh, like termite free. Aluminum. I mean, use anything, man. Don't Suleiman in you that there's a termite? Stick. So Muslims, I advise you to take your sticky God and your sticky prophets and your sticky stories and stick it in the top of your <clears throat> uh, TV. Because none of us have a sticky brain to believe in such a sticky, stupid story made by a stupid, stupid, sticky prophet who was so sticky to the point he takes shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period and he was full of lies clean lies and then they come and they say the prophet he taught us how to clean ourselves i don't know why i believe you i truly believe you me myself i'm going to take a shower as an arab man now and i will jump in the water have dead dogs and women of blood from period. The bad thing is that there's no women around me to donate some blood from their private part to make my jacuzzi very cozy. 
Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said that some people asked the Messenger of Allah whether he might perform ablution out of the will of Bada, which well into with ministral clothes, dead dogs, and stinking things were thrown. The Prophet, with his amazing wisdom, he called Prophet Buddhas, Buddha, the one with the big belly, and Buddha, he said to him, Habibi Muhammad, Habibi Muhammad, why you are asking me? You are the most knowledgeable person. Give them the answer. Muhammad, he called Musa. Musa, he said, huh, are you kidding me? You are Muhammad. There is no answer after your answer. You answer them, Prophet. Muhammad, he called everybody, even the genius Joe Biden, who bites us every day in America. Joe Biden, he says, the Prophet, he said, if you see something wrong, change it by your hand. If you could not by your hand, change it by your tongue. If you could not by your tongue, change it by... <clears throat> it's, a bright, it's a bright day. So Muhammad, the one who teaches us even how to be clean, he himself, he jumped with dead dogs and women of blood from period. And the menstrual blood is the coloring for the water. Look how beautiful. You know, you see in those old movies uh, about uh, the Roman, you know, they used to uh, take a shower with wine. Muhammad, he takes shower with women of blood from vagina. Ooh. Muhammad, he is like... This is very refreshing. They said to him, Prophet, you are doing this. You are jumping in the water. And this is to prepare yourself to pray to Allah. So you suppose you will be clean. Would water have dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage thrown in? Muhammad, he gave them the ultimate wisdom, which nobody ever had before. Sewage water is always clean and nothing make it unclean. Take it or leave it. And who dare to question? Anyone have an objection? Muhammad will kill him. And then since then, Prophet Muhammad was announced the most clean man in history. His brain is clean. His conscious, his ethic, zero. He have none. So we have to agree, he is the most clean man ever. I hope you like my video and what we do here. If you don't mind, please don't give us a like because the Christians are lazy. So I ask the Muslim to give us this like if they don't mind. Please, Muslims, give us this like because the truth hurt. And the more dislike you give me, the more I like it. And now you got to move it, move it, move it. The one who is believing in an idol black stone kisser in the shape of a vagina, he is not worshipping God. The one who is following a God, you don't even know what his name means. His name is Allah. What Allah means, they don't know. The one, they associate the name of their God with the name of a man, they are pagans. The one who are full their life of rituals. Shaitan, play with your anus. Shaitan, play with your penis. Shaitan, do your wife. Shaitan, he set fire in the pubic area of your wife. This is not a religion. This is not even a cartoon. This is silly. This is not even good for, you know, it's not even just a story. It's good for kids these days. They are smarter than your grandfather. Even the cartoon today is about a spaceship. Real spaceship, not a flying Alibaba and a flying carpet. The cartoon is a smarter than Allah and his prophet. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And this is your brother Christian Prince who is serving you humbly for today. And we see you soon again. Have a great Sunday. And uh, read. Educate yourself and don't let the fool fool you. And if a foolish man like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? He cannot fool me. What about you? Leave your comment. Thank you.